Oh yeah. Things said and done. Now it's time to play the game. Another song. <laughs> Playing against Lee and Polo, 1812 rating, which is really decent. We plays D4 as well from Czech Republic, I think. Oh no, it's the Philippines. And yeah, I can already sense it's gonna be a bit of a hassle to play. Or not. I thought he would play G3. But now I'm out of theory. This is the problem. So let's play bishop b7, because I don't really know. Yeah. It's six in these lines, but castling was also an option. But it's always better to include h6, I guess, to have the option of playing g5 when necessary. This is long. It's very interesting for our opponent. Throws every normal plan out of the window. Normal plan being taking on c3, playing d6, bishop here, maybe e5. But now that he'll castle long, what does this change? Because now maybe you want to start with h5, h4. I'm not sure what to do. So let's start with a normal neutral move like d6, stopping knight e5 at the moment. Knight goes back. Maybe he wants to push for e4. But the fact that he went back signals to me that I have to strike somewhere in the center. We have moves like e5, takes, takes, and c5, to which takes would be on the bishop takes. Because I guess I don't really want to open up this as either. So I'm not really sure yet, but I'm going to go for a developing move again. E4 is coming. But now we can meet this with. Because the threat is e5, we can. Tr we can combat this by playing e5 ourselves. If here we take, but then this. Yeah, it's actually becoming quite difficult to navigate because after here there's this six six. It's it's getting difficult. It's getting difficult. So maybe best move is to just move it away. And after e five takes takes. Just be wait, he's not even treading e5 because then I just take and take. So there's no actual threat at the moment. At the moment there's no actual threat. It's good to have in our back pocket for now. So we strike with h5, I guess. And we place f3. Interesting as the dark square are kind of weak now, but 
I don't really see how to make use of that. Another option to, is to strike with c5. I'm gonna just going to do that because it feels good. Yes, we're opening up this, but we're trying to open up the king here. So, you know, we have to make some concessions in order for us to have some play. It might be not so good, I admit, but unclear. Starts with e5. Right. I'm gonna see what's going on now. Because after it takes, I just take. And what's the threat? Maybe it's knight here, but then I have queen e7. Interesting. There's also takes here. And after it takes, take again. There, check, here. If you just continue staking, we take with check. I think this is the most interesting line, but it has to be calculated properly. So after takes, there's take. There's also bishop takes, by the way. Take, bishop takes. Knight takes, pawn takes, 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 takes with check, queen takes, rook here. It seems decent, honestly. Let's go for that line. And if there's something like knight here, I have to do it. So that's definitely not good. So he has to kind of take here. Then I take. Yeah, that's that's not good. That's not good. Now I just take another pawn and up two pounds. I don't see the points. Could even drop back the bishop if needed. And yeah, everything really looks fine in this position. Bishop there. Interesting. Let's move the rook into the game, eyeing down the queen indirectly, and maybe aiming for c5, uh, b5 options. Moves like that. Doesn't really remove the thread of b5 there. Does it? Yeah, I agree. I uh, I will just play b5 in this position. Here's this. The dark squares are very weak. Hmm. Question is how to make use of them. Let's take. And now, so you need to protect the pawn. Play move. Well, we don't really need to protect the pawn because it's I used to iron down the queen. So we can make some slow moves. Let's 
start with bishop e7, just defending, and then we can start thinking about queen c7 and stuff like that. But we want to solve some problems first. Okay, now attacking this twice. Slightly annoying, but I think this outpost, this potential outpost on c6 is actually more important now. So I'm going to move the knight here. And he's free to take here. Also, we're trending this. So I think this is a multifunctional move. It's a trade off pieces, but also the, the knight at c3. do sort of blunder and pawn takes takes knight takes but then still knight here rook takes immediate knight c6 or even bishop takes so yeah this is definitely forced and now after rook takes this so he has to respond and if he doesn't respond we have f6 defending the pawn So he goes with that. I still think even knight here is a great outpost. And then to play f6. Rook there. Now I'll play f6. Gotta be careful here. If you are making weak light squares. But I guess it's not really punishable at the moment. And we continue by going like bishop d5, maybe trading off the knight as well. Or going h5, that also seems really good. a4, excuse me. We can also prepare those sequences. The queen there. He wants to go queen g3 in here. That's, uh, that's his plan, eh? I don't think he has anything after g5, even if it's his move here, g5, h4, I just don't do anything. And I try to attack him from this side. But I'm quite convinced this doesn't really make sense, so I'm just gonna go for the attack. Bishop here, taking this twice. Let's go back. Okay. Queen here. Blundering, blundering. Wow. Why am I so. Okay, and he doesn't even see it. That's insane what just happened. That's absolutely insane. That's absolutely insane. I just got reward for blundering my queen. Oh, that was... What, what happened there? How long did I think about that move? Six seconds. Six seconds. And then I realized that I blundered. Oh my god. Yeah. Absolutely insane. That's horrible. It's absolute horrible chess. Well, I think he realizes it as well. 
my god. <sighs> Absolutely horrible chess. I have no words. I I guess there was a knee jerk reaction for me to go there because I was already planning to go there. But still, like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? All right. Now that we re recompose ourselves, we'll just continue the attack. We are up a full piece. There's really no need to panic and rush things as you just saw what happens if you do those things. It's really just a matter of execution now, being vigilant in these winning positions. Notice that this doesn't ever work, so I will try to shift the rook over to the side. I'll just move on this side. And this is just, yeah, it's just game over. It's just game over now. Takes, 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 and we're still winning. Um, yeah, let's just play that endgame, or he is very mobile at the moment, so I'll just... Um, I'll just move my pawns and stuff. That makes sense to me. So I figured out how to exactly win this. I guess we're fine. King very safe still. All his pieces are overwhelmed, so now we create play on the queen side. We don't really have to trade off everything. Although we still could, obviously. And now we just pre-move this. Okay, yeah. It's gonna be some type of hassle, I guess. To play it out, but it's really no biggie. It really doesn't matter how I do it, it's, uh, it, yeah. No stillmates. I really could take my time as here as well. No stillmate, I could really take my time here as well. No stillmate, I could, no, let's stop it. All right. We did it. We did it. And we kept our calm. We made one one very little mistake, which is blundering our queen. One blunder. But uh, I, I feel like we did pretty well. We feel like we did pretty well. So let's see. D4, knight of 6. C4. D6, knight of 3. You went bishop b6. There, after bishop b6, you went knight c3. And the whole point of the Nimzo Indian, which is kind of this, is to put the bishop on b4 and to, in most cases, trade off that bishop in order to ruin uh, the structure of white. Unfortunately, he started with knight f3. And after b6, the usual response is g3. Then we get bishop b7, bishop d3, and now the whole point of the Nimzo is not there because if you now play this check, it's actually quite futile because you can either go bishop here or here, but there's no damaging of any structure. So back to the game. After knight c3, bishop b4, you want queen c2. So here I was really 
out of theory, let's say, and I just went for the most natural move. Bishop there and h6. The whole point of h6 is to always have this option of g5 ready. Let's say I didn't play this and he had the option of e4 and I was not vigilant at all. I played e6. Then he has the option of e4 and after this trade, this is pinned. Must it, must it be in another position where this a6 was played, and now we castle e4, and we are not vigilant. Now after e5, we have g5, which is the whole point. Maybe it doesn't really work, but at least you get some structural advantage. So that's the whole point. So after long castles, I believed um, all my usual ideas of uh, the position do not apply to this position. So I still went for it. So knights, to get the knight to d7 still seems like a decent plan because of the bishop. I don't really want to play g5 unless very much necessary. e4, notice how e5 is not really a danger here. Takes, takes, takes. Yes, there is this little nifty thing, but after something like this is played, um, I think I can even play this. But if he plays this, oh, I, I really saw the position wrong, I guess. I guess I have, I guess I, I don't know. It would have actually been a very good response. Because you're attacking the knight and you're attacking the queen, but there is a solution apparently. I really underestimated this and Knight here. Oh, but I just go knight back and then we're fine. That took some time to see. Um, yes, we're kind of passive, but we're definitely fine. Fortunately for us, he didn't play that and played f3 instead. c5, e5, and now we just take a pawn here. I calculated that this... Didn't really have merit for us. Because there is knight here. And in this case, it's really hard to play. After this, I think he has something like knight e6. Apparently there are better better ideas. Yeah, because after takes, I cannot even recapture with any of the pieces I just remaneuvered. So this is a big difference now. This is a big difference now. I would have to play this again. I don't know what to play here. Because you can just retake with the knight probably. So maybe yeah, this is really hard to play. And I have to compose something like this. Yeah, this is hard about structures, but luckily for us, we had C takes and this, and now we're just up to solid pawns. There are no problems. I always have bishop e7 back if the pressure here becomes too big. But we could have, we went for the attack first. We took and dropped our bishop back. We just work with his initiative, work around his, his initiative, and then be patient, counter all the blows, and start it our own. Here, a big mistake, I blundered my queen. Luckily our opponent didn't see. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a better move would probably be to just take, but now this is, has become weak. <laughs> we have to almost play this. Uh, but he doesn't really have a plan. And I uh, play this. Actually, in hindsight, we could have also just played this. And that would have been a fatal blow. Just not there, one square back, trying to recapture this pawn. That would have been the, probably the best one. Let's just say this is a mixed click. 
rook c2, you take, take, and the rest is really easy conversion. There is a made in 8, made in 4, uh, but I don't see it. I felt like there was a made as well. I felt like there was a made as well. But unfortunately, my technical oversight is too big at the moment. I think that it starts with this, because he literally can't do anything. Maybe then I can play something like this. Yeah, and that would be quite detrimental if he goes here. I guess I have this. Could have to capture with the queen. I capture here. You think I blunder a queen, but this comes with check. And then, hmm, still made it for I don't spot. I guess I can just take here because after takes I have this mate. And some prefer something else. Two. Made in two. I don't see it. Made in two. Do I just play this? But then he can go away. How is it hard to spot any mates here? This made in four. I guess. Wait, there's just this. When the pin arises, I can just use that pin to get him made it. Ah, but again, there's a maiden four here and I don't see it. There's a maiden four here and I don't see it. I think maybe this. No, it's plus six. There's also a mate in four here. I uh, I'm gonna consult the engine here. I'm gonna consult the engine here. Also, it would be nice to know how accurate we played. 84%. It's because of the blunder, probably. It would have been higher. Um, but again. There was a made in 4. Made in 4. Queen d4. Oh, you set up the pin. Any move arises, you take on a2. Rook takes. C2 with check. That's beautiful. And now after this, we just queen. Wow. 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 Ah, wow. Yeah, I did not see that. That's very neat. That's very nasty. Yeah, that was the game for today. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.